Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is your boy Kong Shell Rhythms, aka Mr. Bailey. Welcome to my new series, Back to Basics. That's right, Back to Basics, a fresh start. A new practical series for drummers. Let's jump in. Welcome to the first installment episode, part one, however you want to put it, of the series, uh, Back to Basics, A Fresh Start. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, I hope that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on YouTube, at Kong Chill Rhythms at my website, or on Facebook or Instagram, all right? So, today, today, the first episode is all about getting started. That's right, getting started. So, just a little bit of background on how I came up with this series. So, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, of course, that's my time to usually do um, interviews for the drum section and auditions for the drum section. Of course, I had a lot of downtime on my hands, so I was writing some music, and I finally got the chance to be able to get away and just practice, 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 practice like I never had the chance to before. And in my practice sessions, I started to see um, a lot of weaknesses in my playing. Um, and I started to be able to take the time and focus on those weaknesses. And basically those weaknesses came from fundamentals, you know, the rudimentary vocabulary and just taking the time as I started to record for my YouTube, taking the time to fix things that I saw were wrong and get really, really comfortable behind the drum set and just really be fluent and clean up a lot of things. And so I started to think about it and I was just like, you know, why not share this information with my people that I love, friends and family, other drummers. So today's lesson, like I said, is all about getting started, right? So let's start off with the pillars of music, right? Pillars of music are melody, harmony, rhythm, dynamics. As a drummer or as a non-pitched percussion player, we won't really deal with the melody and the harmony. If you're a percussionist and you um, are focusing on getting a degree, of course you'll get into melody and harmony playing um, pitch percussion. But I really want to focus on non-pitched percussion. Um, and so we're going to focus on rhythm and dynamics, right? And so one of the first things we want to talk about is how is it that we get started as a drummer? Even if you've already been playing for many years, how do we get started as a drummer? What is it that we need to do? You know what I mean? The relationship from stick to drum. And, you know, one of the things, first things that we need to remember is that these sticks are only an extension of our hands, right? So everything that we do with the sticks should come very, very natural and it shouldn't be a forced thing. It should be something that's really, really easy and really, really fluent with the way the body works, right? So the first thing, uh, not, um, one of the things we wanna talk about is the fulcrum. What is fulcrum, you know? Um, you get around guys and they just start throwing out these words and a lot of guys honestly don't know what it means or where it comes from. What is fulcrum, right? And for me, my definition of fulcrum is the point of balance. Now, point of balance could be the point of balance of the stick, the way we sit, the point of balance in our bodies, the way we stand when we play. All of that, I think, encompr uh, encompasses what the fulcrum is. And because I'm sitting down today, for me, the fulcrum is making sure my feet a flat on the floor when I have one of my feet on. My bass drum or kick drum foot is on my hi-hat today to help with the keeping timing uh, when I do the exercise. But making sure those feet are very comfortable, flat on the floor at a 45 degree angle. Um, the bottom of our bodies, waist down, is very, very natural, the way we would normally sit, right? Waist up is very, very erect, straight up. Um, no back against the chair, no slouching, because it's, it throws off the point of balance in your body. So you wanna be erect, straight up, 
right? And then picking up the sticks, right? You want to play the way you pick up the sticks. I always tell my students, playing the snare drum or playing drums should almost be like bouncing a basketball. It should be very natural, fluid movement, right? Right? So when we pick up the sticks, you, won't pick, you pick up the sticks in a downward motion, right? Palms are facing downward. Okay. When you go to pick up something, it's like you're grabbing it and picking it up. It's, it's, it's very, very natural, right? The point of balance of the stick is usually somewhere around um, where the name is printed, right? The top of the hand or the thumb and the point of the finger would usually be around that area, right? With about 0.5 inches or an inch of the stick is just outside of the of the whole hand, right? Want to turn the hands on, and I'm teaching. I'm using match grip, right? Non-traditional grip, match grip, right? Very, very fluent. Hands are turned, um, palms are turned down towards the floor, right? Like I said, the point of balance is usually around where the name print of the stick is, and today I'm using um, some dope sticks by Eric Moore X5Ds, right? I try to use heavier sticks when I'm practicing. So you want this to be a very, the point of balance, very, very fluent. Like I said, I got about an inch of the drumstick just sticking outside of where my full grip is, right? And like I said, the point of balance for me is all about the whole body and not just about making this about two fingers or about the whole the hand. It's about the whole arm, right? Very, very stationary, relaxed position. So when you play, it's very, very natural, okay? Um, think about bouncing a basketball. That's how I teach my students. Think about bouncing a basketball. We want to be very, very fluent, non-restricted, right? Right. So the next thing we want to talk about, right? We talk about playing position, sitting position, all of that, right? Wrist versus fingers, right? Talking about playing a stroke on the drum, and that's basically what you'll be doing is playing different sets, sets of strokes, right? Down stroke, up stroke, rebound stroke, and, and we'll get into that as the series moves on, right? But Let's just focus on a simple downstroke, right? Right? I use a combination of wrists and fingers. Like I said, from wrists go up, it's very stationary position, right? Except if I'm moving around the drum set, then I'll extend to, to reach the drums. But talking about playing on one flat surface right now, whether it be a drum, drum pod, cupboard, whatever, um, I use a combination of wrists and fingers, right? Some people only use wrists. Some people use fingers. I use a combination of both. And it's sort of a push and pull um, type thing where I release and pull the stick back and I get my, my power from my wrist, right? So I want to do a down stroke, right? Getting real full sound in the center of the drum. I want to focus on playing, playing through the drum. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Playing through the drum. A lot of battery percussion instructors talk about playing through the drum, and I think it can be sometimes confusing. Um, so, so in your mind, it's almost as if you're trying to play the bottom head of the drum, right, through the top head, because the extension of that sound when you hit the drum is a combination of the top head and the bottom head, right? So you want to play, play through, play through, and not top off the top of the drum, like pushing off the drum, but almost like pulsating into the drum, right? For those down strokes, right? So the first exercise I want to do is called 8-8-16, right? Fundamental exercise, you see it in a lot of drum lines. Um, and this is just trying to get clean strokes on the drum, whether you be you know, the best drummer in the world or just starting out. It's a great exercise to warm up your hands to get ready to, to play or do whatever exercise you're about to do next. Right, eight, eight, 16. All it is is eight on each hand and then 16 on the alternate hand. So eight, eight, 16 and eight, eight, 16, right? So I'm using the tempo app. And I'm going to go at 65 beats per minute, right? Alright, one, two, three, four, 
Strictly mezzo forte, right? Um, or forte depends on, on you and your environment that you're playing in. I have a room dedicated to drums, so I can play as loud as I want. Um, keep those strokes very, very fluent, making sure you, you know you're in the set position. Your point of balance along the whole body and in the arms is very, you know, is set. This is not moving. And we're using, like I said, for me, it's a hybrid of wrists and fingers. You may choose to use fingers. You may choose to use chest wrist. I use a combination of both, right? So that stroke. I want to keep that very, very consistent, right? Start off at about 65 beats per minute, right? And as you get it under your belt and the strokes are very clean and very even, you can go up by five or you can go up by, by 10 beats per minute. So for me, I'm gonna go up to 75 beats per minute just to show you just a different speed on this exercise, right? One, then two, then three, then four, then one. notes one and two and three and four and or one two three four five six seven eight either way you put it it's still eight strokes depending on how you want to count it uh we'll go over um note values in the next episode but for right now know that that subdivision that i'm using is the eighth note subdivision one and two and three and four and as you hear my metronome coming right so that's the 8 16 exercise start at 65 beats per minute build your way up as your strokes, making sure the strokes are very, very clean, very, very even, uh, at the same um, volume. We're not working on any dynamics, no highs and lows right now. Everything is just straight up mezzo forte or forte strokes um, playing through the drum, right? The next exercise I wanna work on is a single stroke exercise, right? Um, single strokes, very first rudiment, most people learn, right? And um, what that exercise is, is taking the eighth note subdivision and the sixteenth note subdivision, or taking it at one tempo and then doubling that tempo, right? Let's go. We still at seventy-five. Let's take it, take it to sixty-five beats per minute, right? Right. So again, the eighth note um, is our subdivision, and then we're gonna double the time or change it to the sixteenth note subdivision for those of you that understand those notes. Those of you that don't, don't worry about it. We'll explain that more in a next episode, but you can follow the exercise, right? Next size is simple. One, then two, then two, then two, then four. Single then stroke. change my subdivision to the 16th note subdivision just to hear it, hear each inner beat inside there or each note inside there, not inner beats because we're not doing any lows right now, but each note in between 
those eight notes. Because remember, we first start off, we go. And then after we do two rounds of that, we go to the. Again, strokes are very, very even. All at the same volume. You want to attack the drum the same way the whole time. Right? Single stroke exercise. I'm going to do it again. Start off with the eighth note subdivision. And then we switch over after doing two sets of um, eighth note subdivision. Switch over to the sixth eighth note subdivision or doubling the time and the amount of notes that you play. Right? First time is really slow, focusing on cleaning up each stroke. I'm very, very focused on control play, right? When you start these beginning steps, getting started is always going to be about control. Control, control. Stick control exercises is, is what really, really helps, right? So, eight note, then 16 note subdivisions. That's the second exercise, right? So, you've got the eight, eight, 16. For you to work on, starting at 65 beats a minute. Then you got uh, the single stroke exercise, which starts with the eighth note subdivision, going into the 16th note subdivision. Start at 65 beats per minute. As you get more comfortable behind the 65, which at slower tempos help you to focus on cleaning the stroke up and focusing on the control of those strokes, then you can start to uh, make it faster. BPMs go five, BPMs faster, or 10, whichever one works, right? So, the last exercise I want to do is a double stroke exercise. Double stroke meaning two on each hand, right? This is also your second rudiment that you would want to learn, right? Because everything that you're going to do from here on out is going to encompass single stroke, double stroke, or a combination of the two. Single stroke, double stroke, or a combination of the two, right? So, this next exercise is similar to the... Single stroke exercise, in that it starts on the eight note um, subdivision, then it goes to the sixteen note subdivision, right? And I'll show you, right? Making sure that you stay within the boundaries of that tempo. Um, I am counting every single beat in between one and four. So, you know, each each whole note is one iana, two iana, three iana, four iana. So I'm counting every single beat. Making sure that I attack on the eighth note is one, two, three, four, five. On the sixteenth note is So making sure that we stay in very, very balanced, very, very, as clean as possible. Try to be as perfect as possible. Always focusing on being balanced, sitting up straight, breathing. That's, that's one thing that I didn't touch on. You have to breathe when you play, right? When you don't breathe, it starts to create hiccups in the music. You understand? So you want to, breathing is a part of that point of balance. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. As you play, ensuring that you are focusing on giving, your, giving the music Clean, clear, concise strokes, control, play, right? So, I don't want to be too long with you on this first episode. Let's recap, right? Talking about the fulcrum. 
the fulcrum, the point of balance. And the point of balance, like I said, for me, this is just for counter rhythms, is all it's not just about focusing on two fingers or focusing on a full hand, but focusing on the entire body. What is the point of balance for the entire body? You know, 45 degree angle, making sure you're sitting properly, from waist up is erect, making sure that you grab the stick for the point of balance on the stick would probably be somewhere around where the writing is or labeling on the stick is, all right? I got about an inch or just a little less than an inch of the stick sticking outside, uh, picking up the stick properly, palms are turned down, of course, we, we do a match grip, right? Traditional grip would be a whole other thing, but palms are turned down, making sure that you know the body is very fluent. The sticks are just an extension of what the hands would be able to do, right? Making sure contact with the drum is clean, trying to play through the drum, right? And then the exercises we talked about today, right? Eight, eight, sixteen. Eight on each hand, and then sixteen on the subsequent hand. So eight on the right, eight on the left, sixteen on the right. Eight on the left, eight on the right, sixteen on the left, right? Then you got the single stroke, the single stroke exercise, which is your first rudiment. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Then, of course, you got the double stroke exercise. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Start each exercise at 65 beats per minute, right? And then you move up, keep it, making sure that everything is clean and controlled and concise. And then you move the BPMs up, all right? Thank you guys for tuning in, man. I hope to see you next week on the next episode of Back to Basics, a fresh start, practical series for drummers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your day, man. Subscribe, like, uh, 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 uh,